All right. So uh, just a quick, a very quick recap of uh, how we got where we are. We started with the slope formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And then it multiplied by x2 minus x1 on both sides. And then when you multiply a fraction by its own denominator, the denominator divides that thing there and you get a 1. So we wound up eventually with y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Where m is the what? Slope. And this y1 is what? It's a y from the point. It's like half of a point. What's the y part of that point? And this comes from the same point. And this y is? Kind of a trick question. Do I need to plug a number in there for that y? That 8 would go here. So do I need to plug in this y? No. So it's just so when I ask, this y is what? I was expecting variable, right? It's just a variable. So I'll clean this up a little bit. Just made a big mess here. And we call this the uh, what form? Point slope form. The point slope form. Point slope form. Because if we're given a point and the slope, we can quickly make an equation for this line. Okay? So uh, y minus 8, Brady already kind of got us started on this, equals what? Three fourths times x minus 4. X minus 4. Okay. Uh, we could call it good there. I mean, as I said last class, this is an equation. It is a function. I could plug a number in for x, right? Can I plug a number in for x? Yes. Certainly. Why couldn't I? I can plug a number in for x, multiply by 3 fourths, add 8 on both sides, and then I'll know what y is. Okay. So that's why the answer looks like this. It's just in point slope form. If we were to go any further and solve it for y, it's going to go away. No, okay. uh, if we were to go any further, get y by itself, well, then we'd just be changing it into another form called slope intercept. Slope intercept form. Okay. So, if you've been asked for it in point slope form, this is what point slope form looks like. If we were to, just for practice, uh, write it in a slope intercept form. Go ahead and distribute that 3 fourths. So we get 3 fourths times x. 3 fourths times negative 4 would be negative 3, right? Because we're 4, we divide the 4, and we have a negative 3 left. We add 8 to both sides, we get y equals 3 fourths x plus 5. Because negative 3 plus 8 is 5. So now it's in slope intercept form. But it's usable. Either way, and it, actually in either uh, case here, we could use it to graph the equation. We could uh, to, to draw the graph. Let's see if we put this over here. Um, put this maybe without those distribution marks. Um, here. So if I wanted to graph this one, this is one we're used to. Let me just plug a 0 in for x and find the y-intercept of 5. There we go. It follows the slope of 3 fourths. Right, that means to the right 4. 1, 2, 4, because we want to go to x is 4, so that the 4 divides the 4, right? We get a whole number. And when we move over 4, we'll have to move up. 3. 3, exactly. And there we go. And we can graph. Well, this here, this is the point slope form, and remember, it looks like this y minus y1, or y1 comes from a point, equals m, that's the slope, times x minus uh, x1, which is an x from a point. So that tells me that whatever I'm subtracting here must be the x of a point. Right? So I'm subtracting a 4, so there must be a 4 right, that belongs to one of the points. One of those points has an 
x of 4. And that point has a y of what? What is the y part at this point? 8. Is 8. I can see that here, right? Because that's the point slope form. y minus is a y value from a point, the same point that this x comes from. And it's important that it's subtracted, right? And it is subtracted. So 8, 4 comma 8 is a point on the line, and I know the slope, I know the slope first, move over four, move up three. So, I can put a point at one, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight, hey, let's uh, follow that slope over four more, one, two, three, four, and up three from there, so up one, two, three more, there we go. have there? Sean? Positive. Oh. positive slope. Does this have a positive slope? Yes. Ah. How do these lines compare? They're the same line. If I had drawn them absolutely perfectly and I put this graph on top of this graph, I'd only see one line because they're the exact <laughs> same line. Right? Does that make sense? Yep. Alright, so a uh, bunch of words that I said. Uh, here's what they all meant. All right, we take the point and the slope, we plug it into the point slope form, and we can be done. It's the, point, it's the equation of a line in point slope form. We can write it in slope intercept form. And either way we write it, we can use different kinds of information to graph the exact same line. Here we get the y intercept right out of there. We get the slope of over 4 and up 3, and there's the line. Or from here we get that the point, it, the, one of the points in the line is four comma eight. We graph that point, we follow the slope of four or three, and we get the exact same line. And in fact, this point right here is four comma eight. We found it by starting with the line intercept that we go over four and three. All right. Now we're given two points, negative 9 comma 5 and negative 3 comma 3. To use the point slope form, I need a point, which I have my choice of two points, either point will do, but I also need to know what? The slope. So can we figure out what the slope is? Yeah. yeah given any two points, you should be able to find the slope by doing what? 3 minus 5. Negative 3 minus negative 9. Negative 3 minus negative 9. 3 minus 5 is negative 2. Negative 3 plus 9 is 6. So negative 1 third is the slope. So now we have the slope, and we have either of these points to be one of these. I'm going to choose this one. Why do you think I might choose that one? That was really big important. Guess why I would choose that point over this point to use? smaller numbers, if we pick this guy, we'll get the, um, well, we get a different looking equation. It'll have different numbers in it. So there's two options here. Um, if I were to leave it in point slope form. But I write it in slope intercept form, it'll be found exactly the same. And, uh, well, I guess I'll show you that. So we have y minus what? If we choose this point. So y is a positive 3. So y minus 3, and then that equals the slope of negative 1 third times x Minus what? Negative. Minus a negative 3. So this is going to come out as a plus 3. Y, y minus what? Y minus 3 equals negative 1 third times x plus 3. So notice if you have a plus 3 inside the parentheses there, you know that the x in the point, the 
is actually a negative three. Um, okay, so there you go. There's that equation. Just like that. Let's scoot that over because I know what that view is, right? The other equation that we would get if we use the other point, and then I'll show you how they're the exact same equation. So we have y minus, if I use this point instead, I have y minus what? Y minus five equals negative one third times x minus negative nine. Y minus five equals negative one third times x plus nine. So you might think, well, these are two completely different equations. If they're not, okay, then we can prove it by writing in the slope intercept form. So we'll write this truth as negative one third, we get y minus three equals negative one third x. Negative one third times three is negative one. Add three to both sides and we get negative one third x plus two. Okay, here we do the same thing. Y minus five equals the truth to negative one third to get negative one third x minus three. Negative one third times nine is negative three. So add five to both sides and we get y equals negative one third x plus two. And that is what it asks us to do, is to write it in the slope intercept form. Whether I choose the first point or the second point, put it in point slope form, and then solve for y, same equation, either way. Questions? Sure. So could you leave it um, in the equation, the second one? The, this one? Yeah. You could. But that would be in point slope form. And the only reason we need to not leave it that way is because we can look at the directions here so write it in slope intercept form. All right. if, it, if it were you, just all by yourself in the desert island, and nobody was telling you what to do, you just leave it just like that. Okay. And the reason why like, these are the same equation is because if I plug in a number for x here, and I get a number, I solve for y, right? And the same, same x will give me the same y in this equation. So this one I can see that if I plug in a, a six here, six, it's gonna give me zero. So it's gonna give me zero. If I put a six here, I'm also gonna get a zero. Six plus three is nine, times negative one third, negative three, add three to both sides, get zero. Right? So they're both going to give me the same input and output, the same order. So anyway, if you did that for us. Jumping back to number 20 here. Number 20, about circles. Uh, so you give us two circles, two. And the circumference, what's the circumference mean? Circumference around the circle. Yeah, so if we were to walk around the circle and measure how far we walked, that would be the circumference. Bigger circle here. Bigger circle. Three. Circumference of six pi. So plot the points two comma four pi and three comma six pi. So, so here is a y axis and an x axis. Here we have one, two, uh, two comma four pi. Well, pi is a number, how big is pi? 3.14. Yeah, approximately 3.14. Uh, so 3.14 times, is that, times four, times four, 12.56. That's way up there. Uh, so I guess, I will make this like uh, three six uh, three six nine twelve fifteen. All right, so twelve point five six is gonna put me right about here. Okay, so that's the point two comma four pi two comma twelve point five six. This other point is gonna be three comma. 6 pi, so let's uh, jump over. Look at what 6 pi is, 6 times 3.14. Uh, 
18.84. So this will be 18, 21, 18.84. So there's those two points. Uh, write an equation of the line that passes through the two points. Now, this is the same kind of question we just did on the previous page, right here. Two points, give me the equation of the line. Okay. What did we figure out first in this equation, or this, uh, this problem? Slope. The slope. Can we figure out the slope here? Yeah, the same question, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So what's my y1? Y2 or whatever. 2.56. 12.56, which is uh, 4 pi, right? We'll just kind of be exact here. Just trying to give us an idea where it was in the graph. We can use 4 pi as an exact value. So that'd be 4 pi minus what? 6 pi. 6 pi over 2 minus 3. So we get uh, negative. 2 pi, right? 4 pi minus 6 pi is negative 2 pi over negative 1. So that's 2 pi. So far, so good. That's the slope. So we have the slope. We have uh, our choice of either of these two points. So it would look like this y minus, which point should we choose to use? Let's you just shout it out. 3, 4. 3.365? No, 3, 6, 5. Oh, 3, 6, 5. Okay, I got it right there. So it's going to be y minus what? 6, 5. 6, 5. So that is the y value, 6, 5. Equals the slope of 2 pi times x minus 3. All right. Um, actually, no, I'm going to call this, instead of x, I'm going to call it r. Does that make sense? Radius, right. The x value is a radius. So that is okay, so let's write this in uh, slope intercept form. It's in point slope form. Let's write it in slope intercept form. So we'll distribute to 2 pi. We got y minus 6 pi uh, equals 2 pi times r minus 2 pi times negative 3. Okay. 2 pi times negative 3 is negative 6 pi. So we'll add 6 pi to both sides. And well, the negative 6 pi plus 6 pi is just going to be 0. So y equals 2 pi r. And really, y is a circumference. So does that look familiar? Have you ever heard of c equals 2 pi r? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we just, uh, by knowing the radius and the circumference of two different circles, came up with the equation for the same. Any questions there? So you a good variety of problems. We got the slope and the point. So we're given a slope and a point. We're given uh, two points. And then once again, in number 20, when we're given two points. We find the slope, plug the point in. Okay. Any questions at all? And let's put everything away and get ready to review. We use our uh, point slope form. Y minus y1 equals n times x minus x1. Then we can plug in this y value there, x value here, slope there. Y minus negative 2 equals negative 7 fifths times x minus you have, well, if you have y plus 2 equals negative 7 fifths times x minus 10, that's fine. But uh, you also just, maybe just for practice, want to start putting it in and putting it in slope intercept form. So we'll distribute the <coughs> negative 7 fifths to the x and to the negative 10. So we'll get y plus 2 equals negative 7 fifths x plus 14. Just to show you why that's 14. Negative 10, and so we would get the, the wrong way. We would get 70 over 5, and 70 divided by 5 is 14. Or 5 cancels, negative 10, we get uh, negative 2, and negative 7 times negative 2 is positive 14. 
Subtract 2 from both sides, and y equals negative 7 fifths x plus 12. So either this guy right here, that's good, and that guy right there, either way. All right. Now we're given two points. So we need to find the slope, so 8 minus negative 7 over, so 8 minus negative 7, so we need to go negative 6 minus 3, 8 plus 7 is 15, over negative 6 minus 3 is negative 9, which simplifies to negative 5 over 3. So now we have the slope, negative 5 over 3, we have our choice of two points, I'm going to choose this one, just because uh, this x value is smaller, uh, y minus negative seven, so I'm just gonna go ahead and write y plus seven, all right, sounds good, all right, no problem there, equals negative five thirds times x minus three, y plus seven equals, let's distribute the negative five thirds, negative five thirds x plus five, the three, it's just gonna divide the three, negative times negative is positive, subtract seven from both sides, y equals negative did leave it this way, that's all right. I'd like to see you doing this, but no credit loss, I should be just, because I didn't specify. I didn't say write in the slope intercept form, I just said write the equation, all right? And this also be an equation for y. All right, any questions? Point slope form? Slope, got a point, plug them in, so y. Good? All right, so you like one person doing like a quarter of a head. So, of course, should have our notes out right now, if we don't already. What would you say about these two lines? They are yeah. parallel. Okay, what do we know about parallel lines for sure? The one thing that's guaranteed about two parallel lines is... Same rate of change. Same rate of change? Never touch. Never touch, right? Now, never touch is kind of uh, <coughs> too specific, but if we say they have the exact same rate of change, that's like very mathematical and numerical, right? So they have the same rate, the same slope, right? Same delta y over delta x, same change in y over change in x. Okay. Uh, what about these two guys? Perpendicular. Perpendicular. What do we know about the slopes of perpendicular lines? Say much better. Opposite, right? Opposite signs, reciprocal. For example, if one line has a slope of five thirds, then a perpendicular line has a slope of negative three fifths. Negative three fifths. Very good. Okay. Just a quick recap there. So we're going to use that information. We're going to once again write equations of lines. To give you information about those lines using this, almost like a, a riddle, right? So tell you something about the line without exactly telling you something about the line. But before that, let's just remind ourselves real quick, if we have a y-intercept of 3 and a slope of 5 eighths, can we write the equation of that line? Yes. yes. What is this, Jacob? Um, y equals 5 eighths plus x plus 3. Perfect. Now, what if instead of saying all that stuff, I said this? Except for three, and it's parallel to that line there. Y equals five x minus four. <coughs> Anybody think they can decipher the equation of the line from that information? Three, three, three. Well, like it's parallel to the sign, so it's the same slope. Yes. But the line is like three. Yes. Instead of four. Negative four. Right. So we could just say y equals. 5 eighths x plus 3. Exactly the same as this, right? I, mean, I basically just told you the slope is 5 eighths in a really roundabout way. I said it's parallel to this line. Right? So all I'm really
really doing, I'm just changing that just a little bit by saying that it's parallel to some line or perpendicular to some line. And what does that tell you about your line? That it's got the same rate of change. That it's the same rate of change, the same slope, if it's parallel. If it's perpendicular, then it's not the same, right? It's the opposite, opposite. reciprocal. But th just, that is just telling you what the slope is, okay? Does this matter at all? No. No, no. no. this is useless information, okay? This is all we can know. This is the only information we can pull out of that other line. We only need to know about its slope. Try this again. If I tell you the y-intercept of some line is seven and it's perpendicular to this line, uh, y equals three fourths x minus ten. Kids, will it be y equals negative four thirds x minus? Plus seven? Mm-hmm. That's exactly it. You have the y-intercept, plus seven. You have the slope, negative four thirds. And so now, by taking the information from the perpendicular or the parallel line, just get the slope, right? And then I use any other information that's given. Maybe you're given a point, you're going to use the point slope form. That'll be handy. Give the y-intercept, just plug that stuff in. Uh, if you're given two points that the other line goes through and that is parallel, right, then you're going to need to figure out what the slope of the other line is, and then use the other information that it gives you, okay? So, what I'm saying here is, same thing as before, we started with the y-intercept and the slope, right? And we wrote in the slope-intercept form. Then, just now, right, we handed in homework and did a review where we're given the point and the slope in some way, right? Whether it be kind of in a cryptic way or a really straightforward way, and now, we're really being giving one of either of those two uh, combinations of information, right? Just the slope information is coming from some other line, whether it's parallel or perpendicular. All right, so I think if I know you, that you'll do well. And I want to give you a little bit of time to try your hand at it. So, yeah, there we go. A few homework problems to do uh, Friday, the 20th. Two point six extension, right? That page eighty four and eighty five. Two six. 8, 10, and 13. 